All right, I thought we were playing that again. It was so good. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 2023 Live Zebra Sculpt Off pre event training. Ask me anything. My name is Ian Robinson. I'm the Lee Zebra Trainer, and I have buddy Paul Gabori and a Mr. Louis Tucci over this way. What's happened? Say hello, guys. Hello, Louis. You're going to do uh, takes, a, takes the plane, takes the stick, nose dive. You refer to me from now on as the coyote up until the time when the bell rings and the toll is taken. Do the right thing now. You see the hardware on my shoulder? We're back again live. <laughs> it's beautiful. So, uh, well, Louie, uh, uh, you know what? The coyote. I'm so sorry, buddy. The coyote. Get it right, Robin. Be... <laughs> Get it right, Robinson. I know we train together. Get it right. Oh, we trained. We trained. So that's the whole point is that uh, we're going to be going over some of the themes this year of what the sculpt off is. If you hadn't already seen it, please do yourself a favor and go do that. In fact, I'll share the link in the chat right now. Boom. Perfect. So you're going to want to go ahead and check that out. But we're going to cover some of the rules, the themes, all that good stuff. So if you have any questions, even when it pertains to like, hey, my character's going to have bat wings. How would you approach that? Paul, myself, Louie step in at any point in time and start helping answer those questions i'm sorry I play by my own I'm rules, just, robinson. you know what <laughs> i play by my own rules robinson you already know take a good look take a good look son yeah look at that ah the coyote we've been training for some time now how long have you been training for this coyote my whole life ah, perfect perfect ah. awesome awesome all right so paul. pay attention paul gabriel take a good look the hardware's here boy paul so He's so focused. Don't, don't 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 make me stand up. Don't make me stand up. You can call me Andre the Giant, okay? Because <laughs> you live on the floor of the green screen hangar in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. We already got a first question here from MJ Sculpts. Will there be an on-site sculpt off, or is it all online? <laughs> well, everybody here has been loving it online, and so that's where we are keeping it online. So. We'll be we'll be hosting from the on-site location, but the event is online this year. So you want to be able to make sure that you do what we've done previous years, which is live stream your stream for three hours with all the proper banners and stuff that you need. And it has to be on for the entire three hours. And that's stuff we're going to get into, but that's to answer your question. It's going to be online. So anyone around the world can sign up right now. Yeah, but you know, I want to dive into a little real quick about the on-site. Obviously, this has been a long time, right? It's been three years since we've done the on-site. Yeah. So One, two, three uh, years. for those Don't of you, up. listen here, Coyote. I have the conch. Yeah, Coyote. <laughs> I have the conch. <laughs> we need so an on-site like is going to be a big a deal this something. year. Uh, obviously, there's a lot going on. It's our actual 10th anniversary. It's our 10th ZBrush Summit. So there's going to be a lot if you're in person. So, for example, we do have a mini sculpt off challenge happening on site. So, I would be here if you can. And because there's a lot of things, there's going to be other companies there with tables. We've got portfolio reviews. We've got workshops. So, I want to highlight the workshops and make sure everyone is aware of those. Those are available now for purchase. Oh, yeah. uh, these are going to be only in person. So, you have to be there on site to see this. So, um, I'll put the URL uh, for you all in there. We've got some big names. Um, can you guys put my screen on? Coyote right here, Paul Gabriel. The Coyote I got you. Here. Never mind them big names. Listen, Coyote. Coyotes are not as big as lions, so be careful over here, okay? <laughs> be careful. Okay? We work in packs as well. Okay, so. Oh. oh yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit. that way, did you, Coyote? <laughs> So there is some really good stuff, especially, you know, if you guys really want to get into hard surface, there's going to be two types of hard surface workshops. So we have Henry, who does mostly uh, vehicles and things like that and uses a lot of Z modeler. So he's going to be focusing on doing stuff, hard surface in there. We've got yeah. stylized characters with Pablo Munez. Um, also, anybody that signs up for Pablo's class, he's going to be covering workflows, also going into um, character creator. And everyone that signs up to this workshop also gets a license for free of Character Creator. So bonus for signing up for Pablo's. Um, we got Patrick 4D, who is amazing. He uses ZBrush with Cinema 4D, but he just, if you follow him on Instagram, he does daily food. Like he turns, yeah. he does digital food. It's its crazy. 
and he does it every day. You're going to need all the food you can get. You're going to need yeah. all the food you can get for what's going to come for you for the green screen. Oh, hanger. mother of pearls. We got my, our main man, Joseph Druff is back. Joseph Druff is back in person. Woo! He's going to be here. Yes. He's yeah. going to be in person. So he's going to do a workshop, and he's going to do really focusing on scanning and gaming. And, in fact, we're going to have a scan truck at the summit, and you can get scanned for free. Uh, so, you guys, you're talking like a, getting a scan is a couple thousand dollars. So you're getting them for free. There's going to be a schedule. Obviously, they can't scan every single person coming yeah. physically to the summit. But this is what I'm saying. There's a lot going on on site. If you're in L.A., I don't want to hear the 30-minute, 45-minute excuse of driving, okay? Just yeah. get in your car. Get over. Even if you're still in your pajamas. Let me see. We, have for a we have also we have we have so many things so you know to get here. So to, so figure that out part too. But I also uh, I know you're gonna probably say something, Coyote. But I just wanted to emphasize real quick too that uh, Drust being here is gonna be super awesome. I know so many people on a day to day basis constantly ask how he's doing, and so we thought, hey, Drust, if you could come here, show up, hang out with hang out with peeps. He's like absolutely, he would love to. So so definitely excited to have him here so if listen you want a listen here to be man him. listen here i'll tell you what the first and prior the first priority would be to be here in person to try to touch this belt and try to touch this hair now if you can if you can muster the the courage to bring yourself down to the green screen hanger we'll, we'll see what happens come on I, i'm begging you <laughs> all right all right I would not want got, person. moving up we listen we got michael popovich as well uh, he also, anybody taking his workshop will also get a free license of character creator that signs up for his workshop. We got our main man, hard surface, also Ferio Tedishi. So this is another hard surface, amazing hard surface modeler. So it's another workshop you can take and learn his workflows of how he works in ZBrush with hard surface. We've got Michael DeFeo. Uh, for those that don't know Michael DeFeo, he is pretty much any stylized artists you see in the ZBrush world specifically, I'm telling a lot of them are looked at Michael DeFeo's work and he is being emulated. He's the prototype. Work. He is the prototype. He is the OG original, one of the most masters of stylized characters. That's right. Like all the way back to, he did the original Ice Age characters and everything. That's so right. he's going to be doing a workshop. Um, and we have Anna Carolina also doing a workshop. So yeah. these are limited seats. These are also only available on site there's no online so to the question about on site stuff this is one thing that's happening on site that is a reason why you want to come in the flesh in the flesh as coyote yes. would say and we have a question right now those workshops on site only in the flesh. they are on site only so you have to be here in order to take them but trust me um, the only place you're going to see them is here. So if you take that workshop, no one else is ever going to get that workshop class again. That's it. It's here. It's only, so it's very exclusive. So you definitely, if you're interested, first come first serve. So please, please, please go sign up immediately, grab your spot and then Uber your way on over. And they ain't going to be recorded and you're not going to get to watch them anywhere else. You're going to have nope. your private, this is a private thing. You come here, you pay the cost to be the boss, as they say, come on down. Cost to be the boss. I love that. <laughs> and, because, and that is the only thing that we charge for for the Zebra Summit. I would like to iterate as well. So it's best to register because we've got tens of thousands of dollars worth of stuff we're giving away at the summit. So you also want to register to be able to be able to take advantage of those giveaways, number one. And number two, registering gives you guys continuous information about what's happening with the summit. Um, somebody was already asking in another stream I saw about the schedule that's coming very soon of who all the presenters are going to be and the times of the schedule. Just just block it off. Just block off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's it. That's it. There's your schedule. You got that's nothing it. else to do but come and stare at the coyote and get the glint off this belt. Shine right in your eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And I, I've been already kind of preaching it a little bit too, but, you know, myself, Paul, the coyote, and so many others are going to be walking around. So it's a great opportunity too to just you know stop by corner high fives hugs whatever you whatever you're comfortable with come on in. Don't put your hands on me. Don't touch me. Grab that belt. I'm gonna put grab that belt, me, Louis. I'm taking that belt. belt. Don't tell them people to come put their hands on me. Put their hands on me. Don't come and touch me. Don't touch a coyote. Yes. Yeah, so our our main thing also for this stream obviously is the sculpt off. Okay. So yes. the this is available to all of you, and you can be anywhere in the world to do this. You just have to be do it during the time of the sculpt off, okay? 
and you have to stream the entire time that you're sculpting either on your YouTube or your Twitch platform. One of those two platforms we've given you in the link. I just shared all information you need to know, which includes the rules, the theme, um, anything else that you might want to have. That's kind of why we're having this stream as number one, answer any questions that you might have about the rules, the contest, How long is it? the theme. It's three hours. So you're going to start sculpting on Thursday. It takes place on Thursday, September 28th. We will go live earlier just to go through the rules again, get everyone going, okay. get ready to go. But you start sculpting. You can't do any sculpting until 1230 when we ring the bell. And yep. then it goes till 330. And you have to be done and have your image posted in the ZBrush Central thread for the sculpt off to be considered for any prize. And we've got an amazing panel of judges that are going to be judging your work. Coyote, do you want to touch base on the judges? Well, real quick, before you do this, real quick, can you make your text just a little bit larger on the screen so that uh, our viewers can see that just a smidge it better? I know you shared it, but... Dem demands. Demands. Yeah, I have a ton of them. <laughs> you got time? <laughs> always, always asking for things. How's Beautiful. That? There How's we that go. work for you? Beautiful. I love it. There you go. Coyote, the go. judges. What you want? We got some good ones, right? Some some big names coming home through. Home? Is that what you want? You want me to tell them what's up? Sure, tell them what's up. Yes, please. Well, we got some legend. You want me to reveal their names right here, right now? I think you're just gonna whatever you you care to do. You're the coyote. I'll do whatever I want. You that's what that's what coyote want. does. A coyote runs wild. That's what I am. Look at me. When I'm talking to you. I know I saw we can you train, together. train together, but Perfect. hear me out here a second. We got some <laughs> legendary judges that are going to take part in this thing. And they're going to be the biggest that you've ever seen, the biggest you've ever known. Now, I'm not going to reveal it right now. That's a big reveal. Okay, okay, no, okay. Note this, that the judges are the best of the best in the world. They've been, as you've seen before, last year, we want to tip the hat and give the nod again to our judges from last year. This year, we go even further. International waters. People come can, live here. Can we Can we give just a little hint? Of All right, I'll tell you, what listen, what only one because of them does? everything's bigger in Texas. I'll give you this one. We got ourselves the Shiflet Brothers. That's a yes. Twofer. You know what a twofer is, Ian Robinson? I do. A yes. A twofer. You tell him what a twofer is. Go ahead. It's two for one. It means you get That's two, two for one. one. That's a two for one. <laughs> LWO. Uh -huh. That's a Louis World Order. You want? You guys one? don't know who they are. You should look them up immediately. In fact, you know what? Because you named them, let me pull up. Pull up there. Pull, pull, pull up, up a link. Right now. If you don't know Shoot. who they are, you should know. Bad boys from Texas. I'll grab that. Yep. You want another one, Gabriel? Oh, uh, yeah. You're a coyote. You do what you want. You, you That's can right. throw another one out there if you want. Now you're learning. That's the stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, let's let let's let Robinson get this one up here so that people can salivate and drool all over their keyboards at what we got what we got in store for them in the first place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, you know what? Let me let me just real real quickly uh, share my screen in order to. Just showcase, uh, showcase that. So give me just one second. Well, I can't wait to be in person with you fellas on the stage again. And just give you the squeeze. There we go. All right, if you can see my screen. There it is, right there. Fear all scratch. Texas. Boom. Look at them. This is this is who we're. This is who's coming in. Take a look at the gallery. So a lot of traditional sculptures, just beautiful four, pieces. One. Look at that. There's there's two, two of them. Four one, Shiflet brothers. Look at that. So look at these that. are some of the guys that are gonna be looking at your work. So. Really, I'm going to share this in the in the in the uh, chat right now. But uh, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to take a, you're gonna want to take a look. You want another one? I don't care if you want another one. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's up to me if you get another one anyway. But I'll tell you. Go ahead and type this one in your little keyboard right there, Robinson. We got Chris Sickles, aka Red Nose Studios. Red type Nose Studios. People have tasted the Red flavor. Nose Studios. Oh, Red Nose Studios. <laughs> There you go. Uh, Just some reading. It's good for you. This is one of my favorite. I love this one. There you go. Let's see the garbage barge. It's right not to litter. You, lo you love the garbage barge. I think yeah, that's your favorite books. one. That. Like, okay, the where is it? Animation back there. Let's see some of Chris's animations. Chris Sickles. Indianapolis. Oh, finest. Let's go, to, let's, let's go to animation real meow. Right let's there. Show people some things right there. Oh, you go. 
you got the best business coffee spot in the world. The parents on the planet, everybody came together in one place. Forget about it. Look at this. Uh, oh yeah, super beautiful work. So there, there's, there's two, there's two different types of judges right there for you. So That's I always two. say this. I, I always, yeah, it's three. three. I always you got a two for the first time, <laughs> Robinson. Two, four, one. So I, I would say this. This is something too that I, I competed in the sculpt off like three, three, four years ago. Um, and one of the things I did is once the judges were announced, I went and I kind of studied their work a little bit and just took a look at what they were presenting, you know, because that's, that's obviously something to really just kind of keep in mind. That's a good tip. I would say is just come in and just take a look at like what it is um, they're doing and what kind of work that they've put up in the past, because since they're the ones who are judging it, you know, whether, you know, whether we like it or not, everybody's always just a teeny, teeny smidgen little bias. So there's always something that artists are looking for in particular. What's cool about judges is that they're always going to present it with the most unbiased look, but it never hurts to kind of see what the judges do. And if you can incorporate even just a little bit of something that they like in your work, that's always a good little tip, a little, little smidge. It'd be like, I oh, know the shift of butters like, like this type of work. So I'm going to try to go for that. So that would be my first big tip. Go study the judges. So now you know, there's two of them. I'm going to share the link in, in the Speaking chat. With this Robinson, one. How do I look? You look amazing. Come on, man. Every day. Good answer. Every day you you're hustling. Fantastic. Show them the garbage barge. He loves, loves the garbage part. <laughs> well, let's let's get to the theme and let's talk about the theme. You can't let and, it go. You can't let it go. The garbage. You can't part. let it go. So some, sometimes you just gotta be a little disappointed. I'm so sorry. Don't let's move, let's move on to the real Paul. Mistake. You want to take this one? You want to take a theme, buddy? Yeah. So the theme is you can see up on the screen right now. And again, we shared the link. We can share it again. The the theme is going to be sword and sorcery. So you are going to be tasked with following along on this theme but really the one main thing is you got to pick from one of the cast of characters we provided for you here below uh, i already know my favorite i i it's what i would do i so you pick one of these characters and we want to see you make a representation of this character for the competition so you got you got several to choose from here me uh, i'm going number one Raycon the Berserker. I just like the, the Berserker part. That's that's what I'm going. Uh, I'm that's going. A, I thought you were going to pick a fairy Ragnarok godmother. The Berserker. I thought you were going to pick a fairy godmother with your elf friend on the top there and your little bows and arrows coming no, for me. No, no. Uh, listen, if, since you're asking, if I was to pick a second one, I would probably take honestly Juniper the Elf. Well, you take the elf. <clears throat> I, I was gonna I was gonna take uh, Credmore the 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 stone. Oh the yeah, stone and earth character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so I like making rocks. Rocks are fun to make and really easy too. There's little things like clay polish that kind of just make things pop. Yeah, that's kind of what we're going to be going through with this stream for you all too. Is kind of showing some things that we might use to make some of these characters, maybe things for the characters to give you some idea, get some juices flowing. Uh, we want you guys to also definitely sign up. So again, this is our theme: sword and sorcery. Um, and you're going to have to pick one of those characters below and give us a representation of that. Let me tell you what, it's a mythical journey into the realms of the Z challenge for all the people at home. You need to sign up and get, get on with it now and start rehearsing and practicing your, your chops. Sharpen yeah. that stylus if you can. Don't sharpen it too much. It might break the damn thing. So we got a question from Oliver. Yeah. Is there a concept with it or do we just design it? And that's a great question. You have a prompt, meaning that you get to do the design. We always look for original work in these sculpt off challenges. So you get to do the design, but you have a prompt that has a lot of clear descriptions of what this character is made up of or is involved with. So you get to kind of take those elements. For example, Olan the troll, Olan carries armor with a signature sword passed down from the great Galats. Hope I pronounced that right. Olan has a strong jawline and distinct features. Living peacefully until battle calls, Olan is a childhood is the childhood of the great uh, gardener who ruled the earth realms of the trolls. So right there, you got a whole laundry list of information that you should note that down. Go pull your reference and just start. I would say start now. Start designing the look and feel of your character now because it's not easy coming up with something on the fly. 
And three hours might sound like a lot of time for some people, but for me, I always panicked around hour one. <laughs> so. Ian Robinson, you're hitting the nail on the head right now. Panic, I panic in. Me, one minute in. Let me come <laughs> in. These, these guys are panicking before the damn thing even starts. Let me come in here and compound what yeah. you're saying. You know, your your resources, you should be collecting those things now. And, and I'll tell you what, you're going to put those things and get them percolating in your brain. And the, it, I'm all about the look, as you can see, and you could tell. So you get that look going early. And you go in there and you feel strong like a champion. Yep, yep. And you get to incorporate your own take to this character. So, you know, I got McBobbles over here saying sword, sorcery, and wrestling. Well, you know, there's nothing in there that says he can't be a wrestler either because he is a warrior. So there are elements you could add to make it your own. And, and that's the whole point of this. It's a prompt to give you some sort of direction, but you are not limited to anything outside of that prompt. You can start bringing in elements yourself. No limit that character as long as you are at least showcasing what that character is so we can tell if we're looking at it and it looks like you know a tiny elf and you're like that's a troll if we can't tell it's a troll then that might be that that might be a big missed high five so really think and consider what that character is and we also get this question so i'm going to answer it before we even get it as i'm going to ask it can we use reference while we are in the sculpt off? And the answer is always yes, but you cannot show it during the actual stream. You want to show ZBrush. So you can have your concept off on the side so we're, we can't tell what it is and that you're just following a guideline. So you can have that stuff with you. There's nothing wrong with opening up a pure ref with a bunch of stuff off screen so that you can go ahead and reference that. Because reference is always key. We preach it a million times. So collect that data, collect that reference. And I would even say maybe try practicing, practicing your sculpt once or twice before the day of. That's always a good tip, too. Practice? You should be practice. walking to the beat of life, son. <laughs> yep, practice. Practice makes permanent. That's what I always say. Yep. Some other things to highlight here, too, for everybody. Um, obviously, this is a ZBrush challenge. So everything takes place in ZBrush, ZBrush Core, or if you want to go get the free trial Max on one because you want to get the newest version of ZBrush as well, you can get that, and you want to use Redshift if you don't have the... 2023 version that can take advantage of Redshift. So the render must be done in ZBrush. Right. So you got to use either Redshift or the ZBrush render. Everything is ZBrush. There's no other programs can be used. No, absolutely no other program. Photoshop, nothing. There's nothing composited. Everything must be done in ZBrush during the three It's called the ZBrush time. challenge for yes. a reason. It's called the ZBrush challenge yep. for a reason. And then you can use anything that ships with ZBrush, but obviously there are other stipulations to the rules. Uh, no importing custom alphas, textures. No, I'm gonna re say, I'm gonna pitch it up a little bit. No using any custom IMM brushes or VDM brushes. You can wow. only use the brushes that ship with ZBrush. So any IMM brush or any VDM brush that ships Wizzy Rush, you can use, but you cannot import any other a, one from anywhere else. Is this a Lisa Needs Braces moment? Is, is, do we need this? This is like all of it. This is Lisa Needs Braces of look up here, look up here, look up here, look up here. And Lisa Needs Braces multiple times to make sure you all, that is in the rules. It is down here towards uh, the rule number. It's in bold. It's rule number 16. Right here. Okay. This is a big one. Um, right here, 15 and 16. So any other sculpting brushes is fine, but not VDMs and not IMMs. Only what ships with ZBrush can be used. Can you make your own during the competition? Of course. If you want to make an IMM during the competition, you're doing it during Just the competition minute. in ZBrush. That's fine. Just a minute. Just a minute. You said number 16 in bold. I got to read it out loud so the people know. I don't hear any complaining later. Insert multi-measure IMM brushes are prohibited. You may not use IMM brushes during the contest. As much as I like to cheat, lie, and steal, follow the rule. Now that's a that's a good point too, because again, so you know, so to clarify, we're, we're going to touch on this for a minute. Like this is a good moment to clarify again. If it's adding topology and it doesn't ship a ZBrush, you can't use it. Just think of it that way. It's the easiest way to look at it. We also had another question too that I think directly pertains to this. It's like, what about custom plugins? Paul, you want to take that one? Yeah, that is in here as well. Right here, rule 17. You may use any plugins or macros provided they do not create new geom geometry 
or modify existing geometry. So I like that. Use any the... plugins that make a piece of geometry or modify your piece of geometry or anything like that. You throw a shout out to Casey Forrester for that question, trying to get a leg up on the people. I like where you come from, son. I look forward to seeing you in person one day. Yep, yep, yep. And then the one right before also was asking, there was another question. Any custom brushes that do not add topology is fine. As long as it's not changing topology. It's a sculpting brush, such like a pinch, Damestan, that's fine. That's fine. You're not, you're not adding anything that's creating something on the fly. Use what the ZBrush gave you. Yep. So that's and, I, and, I, and I know that, go, you know, again, like I know a lot, a lot of people use Shane Olsen's brushes. They use or crack brushes. If it's a sculpting brush, you can use it. If it's VDM or IMM, if it's adding that topology on there that wasn't there before, you cannot use it. So, again, this is why we wanted to do the stream, too. We really wanted to clarify some of these rules because these are important questions. And we want to make sure that you are more than prepared for these. Just a second here, Robinson. I got a very important question for you. Can I cheat? No. You can't cheat? What's wrong? Why? Why you okay, you wrestlers need to calm down. Okay? you got to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole bunch of questions so there's a bunch of questions coming i like this this is why we're doing this stream so yep. Ines, to the question does uh, say the name give them the props they deserve that, like you did to me give them the props they deserve people want to be called by their the coyote says give them their name give them their props Ines. 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 Good does on, that Ines. also apply to custom iron brushes that we make during the contest no if you are making a custom brush during your three hours that's fine. You're making it live in front of everybody. It's not something you made ahead of time and preloaded. Okay. So that is fine. You can make an IMM brush and make stuff real fast during your three hours. That, that's how you want to plan this, right? This is like Ian said, I would say those people that have won this in the past and placed in this, I will tell you the one common thread from a lot of them, they practice their sculpt multiple, multiple, multiple times. And it was in their head. So by the time the day came, they weren't really that nervous because they've done it so many times that they knew the steps they were going to process. In fact, I know one artist that used a movie to do the timing of the three hours. If yep. you can guess the movie, I'll give you a million points, which means nothing. <laughs> but good yep. luck. It's a movie that's literally an hour and a half long exactly. So he knew watching that movie twice was three hours. He knew watching it the first time that's halfway through the competition. He put yeah. a little iPad next to him and just played the movie. I don't know he didn't you watch it. I don't know what if you can see this, but if anybody's on that? Spotify, when I competed in it, I there is a Spotify playlist that created by me, Iron Sculpts, called ZBrush Sculpt Off Three Hours. It's exactly three hours. I'm sorry. It's two hours and 59 minutes and 35 seconds which gives you an additional 25 seconds to upload. <laughs> but that right there, it is a playlist designed specifically for when I did it. So yeah, watch a movie like Paul's saying, or put on something, put on a timer of some sorts that, you know, for me, this was nice uh, auditorial cues because it had like some nice, slow, soft tunes. And then at the hour mark, it switched to something a little bit more dramatic and off-putting, which told me up, oh, I hit one hour and just I kept that theme going. And then towards the end, the music got really hyped up. And then it was like, I got to get this going. So whatever you can do to make sure you're monitoring the time and that you give yourself enough time to also upload. This is important, okay? Because you have to be able to upload this to Zebra Central. We're going to be creating a thread the, closer to the right. date that you'll have to be uploading that to. And it has to be uploaded within that three hours, not after the time before that time so um in fact a cube <laughs> you're still here i remember watching the year you one of the years you competed with that that uh, the steampunk spider you were like one minute left <laughs> before you actually uploaded that which is fine you know as long as you get it in before you're good but if Listen you're gonna here. be uh Hold on gonna, afterwards it's time up I got a question for you, goody goodies. Let me let me figure this. The last five minutes you were listening to the Bambi soundtrack. What were you listening to in the last five minutes? The last five minutes. We get the it Bambi was actually soundtrack a, on there. Uh, it's a. Uh, I, I'm not going to say it on stream uh, because it's uh, it has some foul language in there. But it was from the Lonely Island, and it's a bonus track. It's F dot dot. OFF. So hey, that's the song. Maybe that was just like drop side. it. Maybe there's a bit of the dark side in you. Yeah, you might be a villain after all. Yep, yep, yep. 
hey man don't judge, yeah. don't judge my music choices okay <laughs> all right so uh let's get back to some questions here too bread and butter again you can use anything that ships with zbrush so any of the sub tools any of the meshes that ship with zbrush you know i've had in the past year people that wanted to use a skull there's a skull that already ships with zbrush so that person was intelligent enough to go and look and see oh wait there's already a skull i don't even have to sculpt that it's already there right that's one less thing to sculpt as long as it ships with the default version of zbrush you can use those imms those vdms and any mesh that's shipping with yeah that's a hell of a I'm point gonna, right there that's I'm a gonna, hell I'm of gonna, a hang on one second here that's a yeah, hell of a yeah. point you go into the tool menu, you press that little comma key, and you get in that light box menu. You're going to find yourself some assets in there. You come on, 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 come Yep. This is also a time too. I'm going to say this. Okay. I'm going to say this as true and honest as possible. You all know me. You watch me as an artist. I, I have a lot of habits where I'm like, I think this is a good time to figure out the deltoid muscles. No, this is not the time to try out <laughs> a brand new technique or turn it into a study. <laughs> think of this almost like a kit bashing session, right? If you are, there were assets inside of ZBrush. Go, like Paul said, learn that comic key. Like Louis said, learn that comic key. Go up there, study all those assets. What can you use to get the job done quickly? There's a whole skeleton structure. So if you're somebody who's going to come in here and block out the whole anatomy from scratch, might advise that. Might advise against that, actually. Advise against that. I would say, no, don't block out from scratch. You have plenty That's of very courageous. I mean, you, you know, I mean, look, there's always a moment for impressing, but three hours three hours that's i mean come on that's not a lot of time and i i as myself i've made base meshes for companies and it's taken hours to get a proper base mesh that everybody likes that looks good and that's the key it has to look good it has to read and represent the thing you know if you're somebody who does do a lot of concepting in zebras on the fly and you think that you could do it you know look more power to you but i personally will advise against starting from a sphere it's okay. Just Amen. adjust the base mesh. Grab one Amen. of those planes. Grab this rhino. Turn it into a full character. You grab it by the horns, Robinson. That's what you're telling do me it. to do. Grab it by the horns. Let's get a good All turn right. of these things. Show them in 3D right here. That's the yeah. whole point. Real quick. You know, I, you know what I want to do like Easter egg? Can everyone put the rhino in their sculpt somewhere, right? I can't. Uh, Shane Olson, are you referring to your question? Are there computers available on site? for the summit for people that want to compete in the sculpt up. Are you referring to the Thursday main, main sculpt up, the live zebra sculpt up that we've done every single year? Are you referring to the mini challenge that we have? Hell of a on question. Site? Hell of a question, Olson. Yeah. So the mini challenge, a hundred percent. We'll have computers there. We'll have some, we'll have even display pens because we're going to have not only Wacom's Cintiq, we're also going to have sense labs, new 24 display inch, as well there so you guys can see both of those products and use both of those products as well um so those will be there but as far as the main thursday event no because it's not it's not any there's no contestants at location everything's done online at your own machine um we'll be on camera in the main stage um we got some other special stuff by the way happening yeah, for the, for the main sculpt off too. That's oh, a wild crazy. plethora of things happening here. Yeah, live yeah, in yeah. person. If you're local and you can make it, you better show up. I mean, Come but hey, up. kudos to you, Shane. If you want to bring a laptop and then you want to play hackers and then put your phone on there and set a hotspot up and connect via live stream from a laptop, you could you could try. I don't. Come on I, down, Olson. I advise against that too, but you could try. <laughs> Are you are right you, here on my knee, Olson? But you, you oh, wait, well, knee, Olson. wait, well, let's, are you flying in for that, oh, Shane? Is that what you're doing here? You're gonna you want to compete here? Is what I've been saying? razzing Shane to show up for three months now. I've been like Long Shane, down. Shane, yes. Shane, Shane, Shane. I will give you my office if you're gonna compete. I'm calling you out oh, right now. You just done said it right there. You can sit on my lap if you want. Yeah, you right on my knee. There you go. There's your answer. There's your answer. You want to use my office? I t I you want to use my yeah. office? I take a I take a little little sunset. <laughs> Come on down, Olson. I'll be waiting for you, Olson. I got a thread ripper. <laughs> All right. So again, for those that are just joining us and listening to us, be just crazy three guys talking to you right now. Uh, we're talking about the live zebra sculpt off that's taking place on September twenty eighth. We've Sword got and sorcery. 
Yep. Sword and Sorcery is our theme. This, this is, is where journey. you can actually sign up. So I'm going to put this in here as well. Um, we're taking questions. We're going to also go into ZBrush today too and answer anything with ZBrush as well. So just sign up. The only thing you're going to need to make sure, here's one big thing I do want to make sure for those of you who have never, ever, ever streamed. Pay ever, attention now. Ever, ever. Okay, streamed. Okay. It is really imperative and important. Make an account and stream on it before the summit. Stream on it, though, before. Specifically YouTube, they don't allow you to go live until within 24 hours of making your account. So I would highly recommend make an account if you don't have it and just do a practice stream so you also understand what you need to do to make yourself go live and see. Because you can't win prizes without that. And people, I'm telling you right now, we've got over $25,000 worth of stuff we're going to be giving away to the top five finishers from these companies that you see here right now. We've got a lot of stuff again from our sponsors to give you for the top five finishers. Let me tell them. Excellent. So wow. I would it's make so sure to do those practice runs. We also have given you guys links here of understanding how to make accounts with YouTube. So this stream setup, I would highly recommend this. Take a look at this, especially if you've never streamed ever before. Take a look at this page. We made this link right here. It gives you guys literally step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step three, do this with links. So please make sure you take a look at those as well. All right. And then these are just literally one, like I said, one, two, through six. If I remember right. Pause, yeah, a minute. Six. Pause a minute and go back to the other screen for a second there, would you? Which one, Coyote? This one? Go back right there. That's the most important date for all you people watching at home right now. That's the final day for applicants or applications is at 12 a.m. That's Pacific Standard Time, Hollywood, shadow of the Hollywood sign, you know me, on September 25th, 2023. That's your deadline. Yep. Don't miss that deadline. There's going to be no crying and wailing and whining and wailing, all that other stuff. There's a deadline for They call it a deadline. You hear me, Paul Gabriel? I hear you. I'm watching. Look what Ryan. Ryan's going to do the sculpt up, and then you're going to come He's flying in. He's Ryan, flying come in say hi to us when you get here on Friday. Oh, yeah. Eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll be waiting for you, Ryan. Oh, you don't worry about the belt. You know the coyote is going to have the belt on the stream. I'm sure, right? So better. So, and a question came through: Is the belt going to be? No, there's no belt. This that was when we first belt started. rests right oh. here. You see the belt? Take a good hard look at the belt. That's the closest you're going to get to the belt. <laughs> that goes for you too. Gabriel, that's, that's the that is the original one he has on it. That is the original. This belt. is the original one. You're right. Take yeah, it again. Take it. That is the it. The original one is right here. You're right. That's the original. Well, hey, you are original. Yeah. That's for sure, Coyote. That's for sure. You are the original Coyote. Yep. 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 The original. So, yes. the original software. The original digital sculpting software. The world's finest. The best in the world. Yep. And I'm gonna I'm gonna advise to um, <clears throat> if you never streamed before and you're you're get you're getting it set up, not only should you be doing it days before, not not even 24 hours. I'd say like weeks before. Um, I could share. I could always showcase uh, my OBS settings, um, or you can go to YouTube and type in you know how to stream a high res game uh, to OBS or whatever. Just so so either way, we can cover some tips and tricks, but. Um, there's a lot of information on that as well, but definitely get that set up and practice, practice, practice. In fact, even practice with during a stream, you know, even if there's just one person in there, That's tweet, right. tw tweet at me, be like, Hey, I'm practicing on my stream and I'll, I'll come, pe I'll come peek. I might even, I might even peek myself. You know, Robinson, yeah, yeah. you might be the best know. you've said all year. Um, Casey just asked a really good question about rendering. Yes, everything's included, but I do want to let you know we've added this year in the rules. You guys can save out like pre-rendered preferences right so that is one thing just keep in mind there can be nothing in the background rule number 20 right there can only be a gradient or a solid color for your background so no imagery or anything like that but but render presets are per permitted so this is something you can work ahead at a time where you guys can have a render preset that can be saved out and you can load it because we get it rendering will take some time you are only getting three hours so we want yeah. you guys to be able to put your best foot forward with your render, whether it be you're going to use BPR or whether you're going to use Redshift. So you can save out a render preset in ZBrush. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, hold the phone. Here we go. Here we go. But they all come go. for the big show yep, inside yep, yep. the world's leading digital Look, I'm sculpture. done. Show he is scene. Frog the Elf. Done. Done. Love done. It. Perfect. Love it. 
I'm sorry. Wait, wait. No, I'm sorry. You need some elf ears on there. You show no. them where that. Show them where that brush lives. Come on, come on, come on. Just open. I hit right. that B. So come on, hit DMs. That Which one do you like? You like the this one, the chisel one with this ear right here? Yep, that's that's, that's that, the one. Is that the one you want? The one. Oh, that's you, know, you really got a fetish for those things, Robinson. I've been watching you live for over a year now. I see we what turn you're off doing. Thick skin here. I like to I like to make things easier on myself when I can't. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, you you probably want, want this. this. Yes. Oh, oh I kind of like it with the one, Gabriel. I kind of like it with the one. I don't I like it with that asymmetry with that one ear. He can only hear from one good side. What you want? <laughs> I, I, let's see. There you go. Yeah, there. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. that looks great. Yeah. I like that. I like what's happening right back. there. Yeah. Ah, good. Ah. There. there. Yeah, yeah. Kind of cute, right? Hey, cube? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, see? Perfect, perfect. There we go. <laughs> says kind of cute. Well, here we go. It is kind of cute. I agree. You want to <laughs> maybe maybe put a, 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 a pig's nose on the forehead? There you go. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. I think it'd be and better even here. The coyote can't, even the coyote can't make a comment on this one. Wait, that's perfect right there. Yeah. You got me speechless. We're, well, okay, well, then fine, Coyote. You want to, you'll want you have the dog nose then. Casey there you go. For, no, I like them pig nose. Casey Forster oh. says, beautiful. Yep, yep. Thank you. Okay. All right. right so right. these brushes are VDMs. You guys are good to go to use these because they ship with ZBrush. So you're you're fine to use these brushes. What about the almighty IMM brushes? Yes, those are all fine too. But let, hold on, we're doing rent. Don't get so let's not go, let's not get the cape on yet. Let's not get tangent two yet right now. Hold on. Let's let's rewind. <laughs> okay. Here. Not okay. Sure you're doing okay. So rendering there. everybody obviously is an important part, right? So you're rendering, you guys do have the ability to save out the render palette in essence. This is the render palette. So you could pre-do stuff and right here in the top, you can load and save. So this is something you could probably prep yourself with, go through your render settings and then have some render settings that you can just load at the end. And then you know you just hit render and then you get your render at the final end and save that out. You do have to complete the render during the stream because the judges need to see that. They need to see that you didn't do a render days before and then manipulate it in Photoshop or another application. We need to see that you did it during that three hours. That is why it is part of the three hours. Everything is part of the three hours. We need to see you do all the sculpting, all the painting, all the rendering, and uploading your post. Let me tell you, as much as I like to sneak around and cheat and, and keep this belt, follow that rule. The judges yeah. need to see that. They need follow to that see rule. that. Right? Yeah, we but, a couple, we a couple wait, of wait, wait. Okay, wait, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go. Wait. Besides this, people, personally, personally, I prefer to do a project. A project then saves everything. Where's everything. that located? Everything in your lighting, everything that you're doing, if you're using a background for lighting, all materials that you look at, look at that. That's like good time right there. That, that like <laughs> almost looks like where I'm going. Okay. So it saves everything for you, including things like what lighting you've done. If you, you can use an ACR, you just can't have it showing in the render. Okay, but you can use it for your lighting, right? Any materials you've assigned to a model, that's all saves within a project that you don't have to worry about it as much. So I personally, just like last year, we gave you guys pre-made projects to put your model in. That's what I would probably do for this last stage, right? And that's Save about ZPR. Tool. There you go. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Ian. I, well, that, I, that actually I, leads I, into this question right here. We have Ryan no. asking, what about a sculpted background or only the character? Or if are you if you're referring to the the render settings, you can't have uh, additional geometry loaded in to your project. But you can sculpt something as a background, which people have done. They they can sculpt something as a background? They can put, as long as they sculpt it during the three hours, you're good to go. Okay, that's the clarification. has yeah. to be done during the three hours. You can't sculpt so something. For example, uh, I think it was third place last year. They had Kermit the, Kermit the Frog here. And uh, I forget who it was, sitting on like on a dock fishing. They sculpted the dock. They sculpted the little house in the background all during the sculpt off, besides doing the two characters. I don't yeah, remember everything if it was last year be... or the year before. I don't remember what year it was. I don't remember. Yeah. I think it was last year. So as an yeah. example, yes, you can use background elements, but they have to be done during those three hours. You have to make yep. it. So you got to add that to your list of things. Personally, I got people for this being honestly the 11th, really 12th. Because honestly, people, we, we started this actually live on a showroom floor where the artists were on a showroom floor in the middle sculpting with everyone walking around and watching them. That's where we started this thing, this yeah. idea. That's your bottom we, dollar. It was, it was live on a showroom floor in Burbank. 
Yeah. All so those years ago. Uh, five minutes two. from that place. We did two there. I remember the, the very first winner was Rafael Grissetti, was the first winner. Of ever. Another original bad boy, just yeah. like me. And then we split off and did the organic and hard surface challenges. And Justin Gobifields won the hard surface, and Paul Leal won He's the organic. All right, too. And by the way, hey, okay. that also, that one, they also had to make their model printable because then we yeah. also 3D printed them in, overnight and had them on display at the show where they also could get votes. Like that's where this, there's you go. There's a little history where this started from. That's where it came. That's where it came up. Came from. From. That's where it came yeah. from, right? So this is actually going to be what, it, listen, we did two there. We've done nine. This is going to be number nine, so 11. So technically this is like the 11th sculpt off. We've got a guy coming up. He's won it three times. My my fellow Italian, oh. Furio he's Tedesco. In the, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's in the Hall of Fame. Three times, hardware. Got three yeah. of these things adorning his mantle in three different homes across the continents. All in ZBrush. Yeah. All right, we well, we do digital up? sculpting software. Say it again. All in ZBrush. ZBrush. Okay, go ahead. Right, yeah, Robinson. I got my. Right. We got a question from Anna asking: So, if a preset created any artifacts around the character in the background, that isn't allowed. That's the question. I'm trying to. So, if a preset create artifacts around the character in the background, that isn't allowed. Uh, you can you add upon that a little bit more, yeah. Anna? When you mean by artifacts, you're just meaning by yeah anything you right like so like say you have a character and you want to put it. You've got all the tools house. you need right here, Gabriel. Well, we know you're a character, so <laughs> if you have the character and you want to put him in front of the house, you would have to make the house as well in those three hours, not just the character. If that's what you're asking, right? Or if you want to put your character sitting on a, a rock, you would have to sculpt the rock, not. Not the wrestler, even though we're in a big wrestling team right now. For some reason. <laughs> For some reason. You got a belt right here. What do you people think? You, you have to get away with that. Look at this belt right here. Look at the hardware. You know Shane Olsen where he's going to be sitting, not on a rock, but on this knee right here. Yes. Yeah. Like well, all I that has to be Shane. done during the three hours. I would recommend, I would recommend, again, for doing this and seeing where I was going with this, don't try to do too much. It's actually better to simplify it as much as a little bit as you can. Right, you put your best foot forward with that character, Jesus right? And just think of maybe making a small thing it's standing on something, right? More than anything, right? Because that's like if you want to go the full scene, go for it. But remember, you're only getting three hours, so then you would want to break that yeah. up hourly and figure out what you needed to be getting done each hour. I would yeah. recommend just really focus on that character that you're picking from the prompts and going with that. That's, yeah. that's my personal. No, preach it a thousand percent. Yeah. I would much rather you tell me a story in one piece than have a hundred pieces behind something and it doesn't support. Everything you do needs to make sense. And I would also say, if you know what the angle of your scene is going to look like, what your final com composition is going to be, then don't waste time sculpting something that no one's going to see. Just get enough information there for us to know what it is. But you know, if you're going to be sculpting you know, all the back muscles, and then you're throwing a cape over it, there's there's no point, right? So those are things to think about. You want to really plan yourself out and tell a story of your piece. If you become a storyteller in your sculpture, which is what traditional sculptors have been doing for thousands upon thousands of years, is telling a story, you're really going to grab some attention for your model. So really- Every minute of my life is about storytelling. Look, at you with the original it, storyteller dude. right here. Yep, absolutely. See this right here, this is the cream. Rise to the top. All right, so we do have some clarification from Anna. She said, I mean, there are some, uh, uh, wow, I just blanked on the word. Stylized. <laughs> okay. Stylized filters that can be added to brush strokes in the background. Cream, that is the filter. Uh, I, the, the I instead of the Y tripped me out. That's my, that's my own fault, though. Um, but you won't have the solid color background. So the NPR filters, you can use those. Those are there. You can, you can use those. In fact, that one model that, uh, Paul was talking about with the, the frog on the bench uh, that was actually used yes. with some NPR filters. They went in and they just manipulated that to the best of their ability uh, because it's there. It ships with ZBrush. And that's again, mm -hmm. if it ships with ZBrush, you can use it. So you what, this is you. You have hit the nail right on the proverbial head for not only the first time in this meeting as the cream was being tossed your way. Tell them about the lighting. There's also some really good. Oh things. boy, the, my, you well, don't you? I know you're excited there. about that. And don't there's a new wanna... feature inside there. That's right. You want to give ahead. credit what credit is due, and you got it's come right this way. Go, go ahead. ahead. I'm not yeah, going to take my hand off the key. I got my hand on the belt. You think I'm going to let go of this belt? You're crazy. You show him the feature. 
he he's really excited, everyone. This this is let me let me magnify it just because this is super exciting for the coyote over here. It's it very is, yeah. Amen. We heard about early. this for for a while. <laughs> Gotta wake up real early in the morning to be where I'm at. So if you don't know, the newer version of ZBrush 2023 That's has you undo and redo ability for your lights. First time so ever moving your lights. So well, obviously, I I need to switch to a material that actually could see the light. See the light. Yes. So then, as you're moving this around lights. and you don't yeah. like your lighting, you can undo back to the beginning if you want to. Let me hang on a second. All the way to the default. Pat on the shoulder. Pat on the belt. Pat on the belt. This is also available. Don't sell yourself short, Coyote. Don't sell yourself Go ahead. short. Keep it you coming. also, we also More implemented money. that in the materials. Yes. So when you guys are playing with materials, you have an undo redo here at the bottom as well. Again, Who this is it? only available in ZBrush 2023 and up. It's not available in 2022. You got to have ZBrush 2023. Yep. The latest version. Yeah, Just like this right here, the latest version. I've danced with diplomats, dined with dignitaries, sold dreams and libertines, but here I am, still a man of the people, bringing the features for the people. Did you guys get all that? <laughs> I followed a little bit. I followed enough. This also leads into, we did have another question that came through yeah, here, go. which is, you know, will we get the... Okay, hold on. Switching the question. Boom. Will we get the ability to open files created in later new version of ZBrush or uh, new version ZBrush and older versions? I kind of butchered that. Basically, let me just, if I think I know what you're asking, which is you can use any version of ZBrush you have, whether you own it or you're in the latest version, you just have to use what's in ZBrush. So um, whatever version you, you, you're you using, that's totally fine. You're just creating a final image. So there's no there's no need to cross uh, cross over files from older versions to, to newer versions or vice versa. So, so whatever version of ZBrush you would like to use, you absolutely can. We had a couple people last year who were starting to use ZBrush Core Mini or ZBrush Core, and that's that's more than fine. If you think you can do the work there, absolutely more than able to do it. Go right most, ahead. Most important is that you maintain that three-hour non-broken feed and that stream. You can't be jumping around. Don't be trying to jump around and give yourself some kind of issue. That's you it. Understand? Yep. Absolutely. Stay in the pocket absolutely. like me. Stay in the pocket like me. Let's see. So we so let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Got another question. Tips to speed up ZBrush and reduce crash during the sculpt off. Well, uh, don't do that. <laughs> okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm so sorry. Slow don't crash it. That's number one. Don't do that. Uh, no, but seriously, um, actually, big tips is turn off uh, quick save and turn off your screen saver. Okay, I know some of you like to use the quick save. However, ZBrush is CPU driven for the most part. I would say 99% of it is CPU driven. And if you're streaming, you're also taxing your CPU and GPUs in other ways. And if you're not used to streaming, what you're going to want to do is turn those features off because that's going to help not, you know, not cause some random loops with your processing power. So if you turn those off, then you can come on over. And if you're in 2023, you can hotkey the save button. Or you could just save the project file by Alt S, and you can just save with two little little quick buttons. So if you're used to quick saving, I would say I would advise against it. Don't use the quick save. Don't rely on it. Um, however, if your stream goes out, okay, or your ZBrush crash because that that's known to happen. If the stream first goes off, like you you lose internet, for example, or your stream dies, you have about 10, 10, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to get back, but you can't have significant changes. You can't have the stream die, and then all of a sudden you have like an hour's worth of work, and then you come back. Now, that happened one year to somebody where their stream had dipped out. They notified my stream died, and then we said, okay. They came back on, and zero changes was made to the model from the time the stream died to the time they came back on. So that has been known to happen, and that's okay. Just be aware, the best thing to do is have a friend, a family member, a colleague, anyone monitor your stream for you that you're in contact with, whether they're just sitting in your living room, like I did in the first year of the pandemic. I had my friends over there and they were just like, hey, your stream looks good, go. And they were just monitoring it from their phone. So if you can have somebody to help you with that, then you can keep an eye on that. Um, if your stream, cr if, your, if ZBrush crashes, then, you know, just start it back up. That's totally, you know, that, that happens. I've had it happen. located there inside that comma menu one more time in the light box. Yeah. So turn off quick save. That's preferences, quick save, and uh, screen that save. Or, that or reduce it. I would, yeah. if it was me, I probably wouldn't turn off quick save. I'd probably want to still have I wouldn't turn it off. 
I wouldn't turn it off personally. Oh, For me, man. I would yeah, probably knock this number. I would knock this number down, maybe. So you don't need to save as many iterations. And then maybe just change your time. Like the restoration, this one I'd probably turn off. The restoration I, you can turn right off right away. I, I would turn I would probably turn this off, which is pretty much, if you put it at, if you you put it at 600, that's 10 hours. The sculpt off's only three. So I would do this probably. Just my personal preference. Or like Ian said, turn it off and you don't have to worry about it. But like Ian has mentioned, which hold on, the graphic is blocking it. So let me go over here. There in the new version, there is a ability now to not just save. There's also now a save as, but save next is probably what I would use. Um, so you have that available in the tool palette. So this is iteration saving. So this is if you save, right? And yep. then and then you want to save an iteration of this and automatically adds the number. So if you're saving Paul 001, then it's going to go automatically do 002, 003, 004, 004, so forth and so on. That ha that you can do for the tool, make your own hotkey, but the default hotkey is set to projects. So the file also has a save as, a save next, and a save. So I would probably also get just used to using this if you have the version 2023. Um, yep. Sponge, SpongeBob, to your question. Um, right now, the only thing you're going to be able to do is obviously FBX, Go Z, OBG. I usually use an FBX. I couldn't say if, uh, about Packwords compatibility of going from a newer version into an older version at this time. We couldn't tell you, but we'll make a note for it and we'll bring it up in a meeting. Very cool. Very cool. All right, all right. Before you move on, I just want to say a special shout out to the fans, the ones who know the, the, the way to go. Chase Connors. Woo! <laughs> Rackin, KH. Woo! They appreciate a bad boy when they see one. That, that's yeah. true. All right. Very, very cool. Very cool. So keep the questions coming because you have us for the next hour. But uh, yeah, it, what, what else should we you got? You got a tip you want to throw at them, Paul? What's something you would do? You're you're sculpting off. What's a big? What's something you would want to make the, sure that you? Do? I, I, for me, I think the one of the biggest things that uh, I would say is don't get hung up too much in the crazy details, like too much. <laughs> Try and move on. Um, and obviously, just like when you you are sculpting originally and moving, you got to get past the point. Okay, it doesn't look quite right at the beginning, and then it's going to get better towards the end, right? But you guys are having the, we have the luxury of sculpting on that for as many hours as we want, as many days as we want. In this competition, you don't have that. So try not to get hung up on too much of, oh, this has got to be crazy looking detailed, i.e., for example, skin pores and wrinkles and stuff. What I would recommend is right when you start, think about the framing of your render right out the gate. Okay. And I would probably prep this ahead of time. Figure out what resolution do you want to do vertical? Do you want to do horizontal? What, each Render has to be a minimum 1,500 pixels in either vertical or horizontal. Yep. One of them has to be at least 1,500 pixels. So I would recommend figuring that out immediately uh, before you go in so you can understand the framing and your camera angles. And then that goes back to one tip that Ian gave. Like, if you're never going to see the back, then, of course, why sculpt it? Who cares? But that also goes to if your character, some people have made characters where they're looking profiles and stuff. You got to think about things like that. Maybe you can save some time by not worrying about maybe one portion of something because you're not going to see it. So by setting up the framing, you that know, works. In fact, right I've there. seen an artist one year, they rent, they were sculpting the entire time in their final frame that they were going to yep. put, submit. So it saved them a ton of time about understanding where to sculpt, where not to sculpt. And they already knew their framing. They already knew their rendering. Everything was done. So when they went to go render, they only spent a couple of minutes rendering and getting an image and putting it online. I tell you what. Go says, Coyote. He says something real smart in there, not to mention all that zebra stuff. First and most important thing, just be like the coyote. Don't be afraid of nothing. Get in there. Believe in yourself. You too could be a villain. Shred and you, it. And I, I saw someone also ask a question about um, UI. You can use yeah. any custom UI you, that you have. We want you obviously to be as comfortable as possible. So using your own custom UI is totally fine in any menus that you've created your, for yourself. That's totally fine. No problem with that. Absolutely. Mm. Nope, a thousand percent. You get in there, you believe in yourself, you practice hard, 
You put the work in beforehand. Put yourself on a timer when you practice. You're going to play like you practice. As like my granddaddy used to say, you going to win state? Of course. Yeah. Long yep. we need yards. We need you to dig deeper for this, people. Just like the coyote. <laughs> You're amazing. I love it. Say I some love more. It. Tell me more. Tell me more. I'll see you live on the floor in the green screen hangar right here in the shadow of the Hollywood sign. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm waiting for you. So real quick, before we continue forward, just to recap, you know, you're going to want to make sure you prep everything. You're going to want to make sure that you have an idea of what you're doing. You want to practice. You want to be able to just get things set up. Familiarize yourself with other aspects of ZBrush. A big tip I would have as we're watching Paul play right now, making some crazy piece of armor, is you're going to want to actually explore ZBrush a little bit right now and see what's in that asset. You know, what's up in the light box? There's tons of assets, tons of brushes. There's so many things up there that you can utilize that you may not be familiar with. Don't and of course, too, IMM. I usually stream on Wednesdays. So you can also, if you missed your question here today, we, I can also answer it on Wednesday streams because I'm there. Um, in fact, you know, just we cover just little tips on how to just even create wings and all sorts of cool stuff. So, you know, nothing's off the table of what you would want to ask, but make sure you register, make sure you're there um, on time. Those are all super important. And that you practice, got your reference. You know, again, there's always be on time. I Even can't. a like me is on time. Be yeah. on time and show them the IMM again so they understand how to use it. IMM. Yeah, I, can't, I can't stress that enough. Practice, practice, practice. I mean, if you if you hang it out in my Discord, there's practice tonight. Just saying. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, I, I would I would reiterate for Ian. You know, maybe look at certain things may that could speed up your process. Stuff like this, I think, is a the goal is this to make a speed process where I can just put some shapes really fast using the gizmo. If you've never used this, I would recommend giving this a spin. Like stuff like this might be where you find a workflow that can save you a lot of time as you're moving through your three hours here. Okay. Yeah. And then change there's a lot the as far as custom brushes again, they're as long as they're sculpting brushes, they're allowed, but you cannot have any custom brushes that change geometry or anything like that, add geometry. So i.e. you cannot add, bring in any custom IMM brushes. You cannot bring in any custom VDM brushes. That also goes with plugins. You can use plugins, but they cannot change the topology of your mesh or make new topology. Right? We, it's a brushes. sculpting contest. We want to see all the brush. What's you that? All, you can make all the all the brushes you want. You can make a brush. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Yeah. Make it make them live. Make them live in that, that three hours. Sure show good. them where it's at. Show them where it's at again. Bread and butter. Uh, to your question, that fifteen hundred pixels should be fine. I I would say you might need to. I would try doing it right now, like or tomorrow, and then reaching out to us and see if we have a problem. Then we can figure things out. It it will. Zebra Central does change sizes when they're really large, but not fifteen hundred pixels. It should be fine. Yeah. It and shouldn't take but i like that you brought this up everybody i would like to stress this i can't stress this enough do not underestimate that there's going to be a lot of you trying to upload your image all at once so that might be part of what you ran into bread and butter is you were one of a hundred trying to upload on the same exact time yeah so really factor in that time to also go post your image okay because that is all part of the three hours. So I would honestly, tip since you asked, I would stop sculpting probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes before even the time's up. Like I'm done at 15 minutes. All I'm doing is hitting a render, getting my render, getting my image out and getting it up on ZBrush Central, right? And if I got spare time, then I might go back and play with the render a little bit more because you can swap your image out. As long as the image is there, when we ring the bell, and say, bing, time's up, time's up, that's it. We're going to take the images from the certain time period, right, backwards from the yep. start. So I would personally recommend that into some of your timing, honestly. That's one thing I would do. Oh, highly, highly recommend because, yeah, there's so many people uploading at the same time. And here's the other aspect, too. If you've never streamed before and you're streaming and uploading, by the way, because even if you finish early, okay, your stream still has to be on for the three hours. So if you finish at two hours and you're like, I'm done and you upload and you're confident, well, you still got to keep streaming. So while you're streaming and you're trying to upload, that's a lot of bandwidth that you may not be used to doing. 
So what I would recommend is, and I'll give you the link to the website right now. It's called speedtest.net. And it's a great website to figure out what your download speed is and what more importantly, your upload speed is. Because if you're live streaming, usually you're using about six megabytes to upload and then you still have a little bit more. Now you're trying to upload an image on top of that. So if you're not used to doing that, that's a lot of bandwidth that gets swallowed up quickly because upload is usually not as not as big as far as download when it comes to residential packages. So like for me, I usually have like 250 down and like 10 to 15 up. The upload's not a whole lot and streaming, like right now, streaming can just really just take that. So factor that in two, figure out what it is you're actually getting for your for your upload, that's the most important part. And then factor that in when you're setting up for streaming, especially if you've never done it before. So that's another issue too. Give yourself plenty of time, like Paul said. Let's see, what handle should I go with? Oh yeah, I'm building my shield. Oh, what are you making right now? What's that? What's I'm that? building the shield from my my character. Hello, come on. You would try to bring a foreign weapon you, to a you fight remember, with me. Remember, of course you would. Remember this? Of course you would. Some kind of little foreign weapon to put your put yourself over. Try to get. I'm, I'm building my shield for Berserker. That's yes, Mr. Berserker. Wait, where was he? I uh, thought you were going to be a little elf. No, 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 no. Berserker's my goat. Why do you think he's the first one on the list? Okay. Why ain't you got a coyote on there like me? No, right, right. Here's where you guys again choose from. The theme is sword and sorcery, and you must choose one of these characters to make from what we provided. This is my guy right here, Ragnar the Berserker. I'm just making a shield, just you know, playing around making some shield. Yeah. Here's an, you want me to do IMM? So here you go. Here's some handles. Come on. Right here you go. You do you want you want one handle? But what I also really love about yeah. I am is doing this. It's switching to this and just making oh, no, a decision. Yeah. What handle time. would be better for him? Okay, Paul, I got a question for you. So oh, please, I late. go ahead. Okay, here well, we go. Here we go. Let All him right. have it. Can you please show them how to quickly make a custom IMM so that oh, they can come through? I'm asking and make that question for twenty odd minutes. Well, that's what we're going. I know. See, coyotes, because you're the lone coyote here, you need support, man. You this is the pack. this is what pack. packs happen. That's why I'm the baby cub. You got Paul's the lion. You know, I'm growing up to be a lion. I, I just need to grow now. my mane out. It's not as people, beautiful I'll as yours. Smash the keyboard. I've heard it all before. These two guys are trying to tag up. I'll take the tag team challenge. That's fine. A one against two. That's a twofer, like I said before. A twofer. Two against one. No problem. No problem. Two. The original's here. Not the beautiful. first time. Won't be the last. You could bring a whole army. Yeah. Let's do an inner radius. Hello to all my people out in Virginia. By the way, since it just came up, if you do forget to turn off quick save, don't forget. If you hold escape immediately, it'll cancel the quick save. So, FYI, that's, right. that's something to think about as well. If you do keep your them with the tips and tricks, right? So this, let's make something real fast. I'm gonna use a little Z modeler here. Do do do. Let's use it and whistle while you work. Mandatory. All right. Mandatory. There we go. A little something like this. You know what? Let's put a little extra part in here. Yep, yep, Let's yep. not have interactive elevation. Let's do something like that. Let's do this. Now let's have some elevation in this. Yes. What do you guys think? Let's do radial. Why not? Let's do yeah, radial. Yeah, that's beautiful. Do we want to go up? No, down. Yeah. Yeah, recess that. Down. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, Downtown. there you go. There you go. All right. And then my next favorite button for me is obviously low polygonal. I need to look at this like this, divided. So I'm turning on dynamic. But I'm a crease kind of guy. And I love <laughs> me some good old crease, the old PG or the old Paul Gabriel right oh, here. Oh, yeah. The old crease PG. That way every poly group is getting a crease. And so now that looks very different. And then I want to knock down my crease level here. And then I want to see when I really start dividing it up, what's that going to look like? Ah, yes. Yes. All right. So this is part of that. And then let me now make a copy. I'm going to hold the old control key here. And the blue arrow, I'm going to hold that. And then I can make a copy of that. If I let go of the control key and don't take my pen off my display, I can keep making copies the exact same distance. Just some fun stuff we're throwing. We're beep, 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 dumping information on you right now is what we're doing. That's what's happening live. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the reason why I'm doing this is this is now masked off. 
and to Mr. Coyote over here, we have IMM brushes. So instead of drawing it out, I've already got this position dead center where I want it because it's a copy. Now I can just come here and say, give me that faceter. And then now I want this to be like a little screw head. Slick. This is the kind of stuff Slick. you, you really That's embrace. Funny. It makes things faster for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. And then now I'm done, right? This is done. I am, I am just pickled pink. I am pinkled pink, whatever the phrase is. Right? Pickled, pickled pink. pink. <laughs> pickled pink. Get it right. Peter, 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 pickle pop, Peter, Peter, Peter. Okay. So, pack so now that you have this, this. Live. no rapping here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't get hip hop. Hip. Wait, we can only go so deep and then we're going to get flagged. Okay. Yeah. We're okay. Get flagged. <laughs> they might hear my, my beautiful rap ability and see, oh, that's actually really sugar. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So, this, the key thing here, everybody, is also what I was doing here was keeping everything in one subtool. I did not take the faceter and put it as a separate subtool. When you're making an insert mesh brush, if you're just grabbing, it's by subtool base. So it's looking at the subtool that we have right now, and that is what we want. Okay. So the view of picking up is important. Okay, so picking up like this, picking up like this, picking up like that, it all is it is all relevant. So for example, we're looking at this now three quarter. So we're gonna make a new brush. We're just gonna make a new one and we're gonna add different variations of this so you can see. This is all you need to do. Position your model to the camera. And I'm gonna show you a trick where you guys can now position the model to a camera specific to a normal now, okay? So I'm gonna hit the B key for Bravo. Okay, and then I'm going to say, I want to now turn this into an insert mesh brush. So along the bottom here, there are buttons, and one of them is create insert mesh brush. So if you just click this, it's going to say, hey, 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 hey. you've already got one selected. Do you want to append sure it that? to the existing one, or do you want to make a new? We're going to make a new. The sure IM and viewer will disappear, which was that menu along the top, yes. because we only bring that forward if you have at least two meshes. Okay, so let's do now a view from here. B, insert, and now I'm gonna say append. I'm gonna say skip the note from now, boom. Now we got the viewer back. Then I'm gonna do this one's looking straight on it. B, create insert, append. Then I'm gonna do one from the back. B, create insert, append. Okay, that's it. You're just picking them up. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Now, if you want to, you don't wanna even go through that many clicks. You guys even wanna do like that in a shortcut. Over here in the brush palette, look at, follow me, follow me to the top, to the follow top, me. to the top. From mesh does the same thing. And you guys could technically make that a shortcut now, even and make the less steps because then that button literally just looks at whatever's there and grabs it. So if I click it, boom, it grabs it and puts it there. So less clicks for you to make it when you're trying to pull one thing in to do that. Now that we have these, let's switch really quick to a queue. Don't let me forget, we're going to show you guys how to align things differently in ZBrush now. So we're going to start with the first one. So if you remember the first one, when we were looking at it, it was kind of like on a three-quarter view. So look what happens when you draw it out. It's on a three-quarter view. So I will never be able to easily, until this, ver never. Until this <laughs> version, until this version, <laughs> be able to make that lay flat to that cube. Now you can in ZBrush 2023.2.2 that I'm in. That is now possible to do. Okay, with contacts. So if you notice every one of these, however I was looking at this when I picked it up, that's how it gets drawn out. And realistically, this is what you would want. Because normally when you're drawing on an IM brush, you're looking at, like if I was making glasses and I want to draw them out, I'd be looking at my face in ZBrush and saying, draw glasses. I would be looking like this. I'd want to put the glasses right at the bridge of the nose and draw it out. So this is why I want to pick it up, not like that. I want to pick it up like this. Okay, now, we alignment-wise, okay, coming back here, let's use this guy. Yes, let's bring him back. Yes, so beautiful. Okay, so now when you're picking up stuff, the camera plane is important to you all, how you're picking it up. So one thing we added to the gizmo now, if you're unaware of this, is when you're holding the Alt key, you can click on any normal of the model. Right. And then let's say you are wanting something like, for example, I want to redraw up that ear with this, but I want it to be looking at the ear when it's drawn out. Right now I'm looking at profile. I can now alt tap anywhere. Well, this has always been there, but now, right now, 
you can hold the shift key and tap on that arrow. I don't want the green one or red one in this situation. I want the blue. And now we're looking straight at that ear. And that's how I can now pick it up. And that's looking straight at the camera. So if I say brush, create insert, and then I append this direction, okay? Then I can go the other ways, whatever I want. Or if I want to go brush from mesh, I can do that. I need to be out of gizmo. Let me tell you something. From Speaking mesh. Things and up, then there's your elf frog. Cute Let me tell you thing. what. You get go, a round of applause. Go, coyote. Let me tell you something really important. Speaking of picking up in the chat there, the people are talking. Make sure you pick up that free T-shirt and wear it when you come see us live. Oh, yes. Make sure yeah, there's a link free to a free T-shirt. Tell them about it, Robinson. Go ahead. Sorry, I was cutting you off, buddy. I'm rude. Go ahead. My Bill, bad. Speak when I'm speaking. <laughs> Got my eye on you. I didn't want to Go ahead and tell them what it is. Go ahead, Mr. Ian. I'm getting ready to up and leave on this. Oh, you're going to? I don't know. Stay, please. Don't go. Come back. Stop. Big all no. you want to. <laughs> Tennessee time. Let's go. Get Tell that free. About yeah. About <laughs> so, go now that I've made this awkward, my bad. Uh, yeah. So grab that free T-shirt. So thank you guys for. Well, first off, thank you for being here this long. I see that there's Welcome. over 100 people here hanging out with us. Welcome. And also, don't forget to like that this stream. But you get a free T-shirt for hanging out. So the password that's on the screen. There's links in the chat and a password. Just follow that. The only thing you do is pay for shipping, which is just a few bucks. But you get a nice free T-shirt as a thank you for hanging out and being a part of our community. So. Grab that free T-shirt, and then like like the coyote said, show up here with that shirt. We'll all take a photo together. Take advantage of the photo op. It ain't going to only come once. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. All right, yeah, sorry, you, Paul, you had more to add to that. I, wanted, I do have I something, too, I want to show as I well. just about enough. Hold on a minute here. I've had just about enough. I'll see you two live on the floor at the Zebra Summit. For now, hey, this is come back. I've had enough of this abuse. I'll see. You. I got to train myself to take care of YouTube. I'm I'm out. I'm out. Later. All my fans, all the fans in the chat. But I want to tell all the fans in the chat. Thank you very much for the love. You know how the dark side is. Come on over. We'll see you here. All right. All right. Coyote all right. out. Coyote out. Coyote out. <laughs> Coyote out. Very very cool. Okay. Uh, do you want to add more to that IMM, or should I uh, show them a? Uh, a thing or two you can you, you can show a thing or two i'm just now having some fun here just okay cool but well, there is something else i want to showcase i'm going to add my zbrush to the screen and so a lot of these characters have chain mail or some sort of cloth and really what i wanted to showcase was probably the fastest way i can think of in order to get some massive detail because again things don't have to be hand sculpted all from scratch so one of the first things I would like to showcase is how you could just make any plane in ZBrush to be used for getting nice chain mail. So, and there's no real adding here. Um, what you need to do is just come in here, insert some sort of plane 3D. And if you would like, you don't want a super high res like this, you can actually just come up here to geometry and you can reconstruct that a few times. So then you can get that a little bit lower. Then just delete higher. So you have something that looks a lot like this. And now what you're going to do is come over here to geometry, dynamic subdiv, and you're going to turn on dynamic. And now what we can do here is we can actually come over here to micro poly. And you're going to watch what happens. If I come over here and say, you know what, I like this heart chain. I'm going to click this. Boom. I now have this heart chain that I could be using for my chain mail. And I can even scale this up and down if I wanted to. If I go ahead and actually um, utilize uh, some of the... You know, I could change the, the smooth subdivision and I could start getting a little bit more of a denser pattern here. But what's important about this method is that it A, looks good, and then B, it's still very low with its active points. So you actually don't have a ton of geometry here. But furthermore, if we actually bring back my scene here, because, you know, you all might have seen this little Henox character that I've done a while ago, which I thought was on par for this stream. And let's say I scale this up. And I needed to cover him somehow, some way, right? So what we could do with this, and this is the power of dynamic, is we can actually use dynamic simulation as well. So I can open up dynamics here at the top. And let me just pin that over here on the left-hand side by clicking this little icon. And now I can actually set up and say, you know what? I want to lay this just somewhere right around here. And I'm going to go ahead and maybe drop the gravity string just a little bit. I usually default like around one or two. And I'm just going to go here and like collision volume. And what that's going to do is it's going to take a look at my entire scene and all visible subtools, and it's going to calculate all the things that this mesh is going to be interacting with. 
And now if I come in here and say run my simulation, now it's going to overlay on top. But wait, there's more too. The thing that we can do is we can open up our brush menu, hit T and use our transpose cloth. And now we can actually use the transpose cloth to interact with this. And if you don't like this chainmail, you're like, yeah, this chainmail is not super nice. Let me try another one. Just look like hearts. another one. It looked like hearts there for me. Yeah, it was a heart chain. Oh, that shifts with uh, ZBrush. It does ooh, ship with ZBrush. Ooh, I got another thing you can show them right now. I don't know yeah. if you can go there. I'll keep it in. I'll keep it to myself. Maybe you're going to show it. Okay, okay, okay. So these are some of the aspects that you can go ahead and you can utilize this, okay? And now if I subdivide, even though dynamic is turned on, I got a little crazy and I said, you know what? I wanted to subdivide. You can see here that it actually came through and it made my mesh a little bit tighter. And we can also apply some sort of thickness to this, give us a little bit of depth to that. And what's really neat is at any point in time, if I just turn off dynamic, look at that. It's still just this plane right here. So go ahead and just delete lower so I don't have subdivisions, but it's just this plane right here. So I can make this as dense as I would like. I would. What I would say, though, is be careful when you are making this a little bit dense. If it gets too dense, like thousands upon, like tens of thousands of geometry, that might slow dynamic down just a bit. But then when I'm ready and I turn this back on, you can see here now that I have a little bit of a thicker, uh, a little bit of a thicker cape here. And then what's cool about this, if I just BPR render, so I'm going to render region just to BPR render to see what this looks like. You can see, let me zoom in actually a little bit more. Control R to render region, just the section. And you can see here now that it's actually, it is rendering, which is nice. So I don't have to ever make this actual geometry to get this effect. This is something that you could do. So if your character has chain mail, if your character has some sort of like tightly knit uh, fabric, this is a really good way to do that. Again, chain mail. And then the other aspect is that you can rotate on the X and the Y. So you could come through and start rotating as I break it for funsies and just kind of see what the different angles look like. Again, adjust the scale, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's, then, a there's, a re there's a reason for that. There's a reason yep, for Yep, yep, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so put your scale back to one. Okay, yep. Okay, and Boop. then hit the align button. Boop. There, now your the normals weren't all aligned the same way, that's why you had different rotations. Yep. So that was Man. what I wanted to share, that if you guys saw when he had, it looked like it was patchy, it's because the normals of the faces were not all the vertexes weren't aligned the same direction per se. So yeah. that's what that purpose of that align button is, is beautiful, to, beautiful. if you see that where you're not getting as clean he is right now, hit that align button and it'll fix it for you. Beautiful. And again, once you're done with that, again, if you don't want to visualize that, just turn off dynamic by hitting shift D or if you hit D, which is the shortcut to turn on dynamics, say always yes. Now that model's there. And again, you could just manipulate it. You can move it. And of course the cleaner, the topology, is obviously the more effect you can get and at some point in time again if you're just like want to reset this you can always recalculate now i mentioned this before it was for visible sub tools right so let's say i do come in here and i have hidden everything and i have this and i want this to be affected okay so let's actually go back in time i'm going to control z a, a lot do, 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 do. there we go it controls the a lot, get something like this here. We're going to go back to the dynamic, just hit a line real fast. So now we have this mesh here. Now, if I just run this without recalculating, all of a sudden I get this ghost effect where now this is being overlaid on something, even though it doesn't look like there's anything. So if I, for whatever reason, turn things off, just make sure that I come over here and I recalculate my scene so that ZBrush knows that that new item that I took off is missing. So then when I recalculate that, now you can see it's not affected on the body as much as it is being affected everywhere else. So that is the trip that I wanted to showcase and definitely hopefully see this feature being used quite often. Yeah, I wanna show a real quick one. I think that's a fun Take feature it. that send it. Give me this, give me the screen. Boom. Okay, so this, um, you know, obviously before Ian took, I was doing this, like making the wood on this, right? And then this is a brush that ships with ZBrush. So I don't have to make this. this is on a point again. Take a time to go in that comma, 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 comma world and come up here in the brush. There's another like 350 brushes here. If you guys have never opened this, I would strongly recommend open this and going to take like, there's even like a dragon bones in here where the dragon head, there's a full train with all the cars. There's a lot of stuff in here 
they might take advantage. So I just, I knew that there was a wooden brush that already existed um, in ZBrush. So I'm like, you know, that's a check mark. I don't have to make that for the competition. I got it. It's already there. It's done. I can use it. It's not breaking a rule. So I came in in here and then went into patterns. So there is a wooden plank one and even a stone wall one already here, right? So I want to use these wooden planks, but I'm going to want to do um, various ones. Like I want to, when I'm sculpting this, okay, I want, as I'm sculpting across here, I want, you know, different variations of this or even what size do I want of this that I have coming across here, okay? So right now you can see here, we'll turn off dynamic. We don't need dynamic. We'll use regular subdivision levels. So it's really going to be about my draw size. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here is how big of a draw size do I want? In essence, what size wood do I want to have on this shield that I'm making for Berserker, right? Do I want to go that small or do I want to go something a little bit bigger? Probably maybe something a little bit in between. I say that that looks pretty good. That looks like a pretty good size for me. Okay. That's beautiful. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, You're welcome. you know what? My mind... My mind's going somewhere. I want to show this first. My, once I start going, the mind just starts popping for me in ZBrush. It's, going, boop, boop, boop. it's like, so I'm, oh, yeah. okay, don't make fun. It's like empty and there's just popcorn now. It's just popping off. It's just <laughs> popping off. Okay. There's little kernels in there just waiting to be popped of ZBrush knowledge. Okay. So I just made that up on the fly, people. That's a new one for you all. There you go. Just oh, like, pop, 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 pop. what's my new nickname? Shane Olson, throw it at me again. Okay. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the masking menu. All right, I'm going to say, okay, I want some wood planks up here for sure. Right, and then now I want another run here, okay? Now, what you all will run into sometimes is if I want to get another run like this, you can see what starts to happen is I am overlapping the existing stroke, right? You might be okay with that. Think about this for scales. Think about this for anything you do where you're kind of putting details and you mm -hmm. don't want to overlap the last stroke or even previous strokes for that matter all right so now i'm going to say all right i'm going to make the first one like right here we're going to go right here that looks good i'll go there okay and so i'm going to want to now draw again but i don't want any overlapping so what i'm going to do is come over here and use this feature we added in 2020 i want to say we added this in it um this button right here make mask changed points and i'm going to turn it from the default the default is a little closed circle i'm going to make it the open circle okay and now i'm going to click this and what it does is it masked off that last stroke i did so even if i come in here and i want to experiment with another stroke it's masked off i'm not going to ever overlap right it's never going to happen there's no overlapping in here so the difference here between the two is when you guys make a stroke like this okay by default, that masking option, right? If it's closed, gives you a mask like this instead. And this is now looking at actual pressure and the points of interest in the alpha. In essence, what was pushed the furthest compared to what wasn't pushed, okay? And then going from there. So now you can do stuff like this and do this. The reason why I wouldn't use a morph target to what Alan's bringing up if I morph target, I'm going to be erasing the previous wood planks that I've already drawn out. And I don't want that. So now I can just keep pressing this button and keep just experimenting with this and going mask those ones now. Okay, let me get the last one up there. And then, boom, there I got those wooden planks that I wanted to happen on here. But since you brought up morph target, since you brought it up. Since you brought it up. Yeah, rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah. Hold on. But <laughs> before, before I go to morph target, okay, one of the things I wanted to show about this alpha don't be shy. Don't be bashful. Get in there. Get into that alpha palette. Take a look at these modifiers. Me, I would probably kind of reduce some of this noise a little bit. And I'd probably look at some of this mid value in here. I would probably play with the intensity a little bit more. So now I would get a different type of, you know, looking brick. I mean, look brick. Looking thing in here. You might want to play with these settings to just start doing, playing around with this. And seeing what you're going to be able to do with this. Because if you start playing with that alpha, you can see the alpha is changing up there. So, like, this is see very different looking wood and brick now. Right? It's more flat. It doesn't have all that noise in there. Because maybe you're doing more of a stylized character. Right? Maybe you want, you want it to look like this. Something different. Okay. But since you took morph target in and you, you brought it up, I like it. I'm not even going to make a morph target. Right? 
And in fact, let's have some fun with this. Let's go a little different round with this. We're going to go chis chisel, 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 because I'm so chiseled. Not really. Okay, let's see. I think it's in this one or the one that I like. No, 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 no. It's not that one. Yeah, this one. Okay, let's yeah. go this. We're going this one. All right. We're going to make some scales. Right? So you're thinking about this. Think about what I just showed you. See like that overlapping right there? You guys could avoid that overlapping now. So as you're doing things like this, this is where that masking idea comes into play for you all. Okay? And if I'm going to really be specific about this, if I really want to just embrace ZBrush itself for what I'm going to do with it, okay, I'm just going to make my brush size smaller just for visually doesn't look weird. So when I do this, right, those scales are a certain size. So obviously I would want that same size everywhere that I draw out. So wherever I put my cursor, I want them to be the same size like this. Okay. And what am I doing is I'm doing a shortcut to a feature that is already exposed for you all inside of ZBrush's UI, right? And that feature is right up here. So there's replay last, but I'm actually doing replay last relative, not relative as in to me, but relative into where the cursor is. So wherever that draw size is, it's gonna redraw that exact same brush stroke, the click and drag distance that I did, which in essence is making the scales all the exact same size, right? So embracing that ability to click this button, but I'm just using the shortcut. Now you brought up morph target. So we're gonna switch to the morph target now and let's go right there. So in this scenario, I did not make a morph target. Now in ZBrush 2023.2.2, it doesn't matter anymore that you didn't make a morph target in this scenario. We are now allowing you guys to have as many morph targets on the mesh that you want at that same polygon number, okay? So this model's sitting at 1.3 million. So at any time that I've made this brush stroke, I'm gonna now be able to use the morph target even though I forgot. So now you can go backwards in your undos, okay? Mark this right here, 1.3 million. Now it's got a gray marker. It now remembers that. So now when you guys go to use morph target, boom. boom. So in essence, if you're not changing the polygon count number when you're sculpting, you guys have unlimited morph targets right now. You don't even have to remember to turn on morph target anymore. So in essence, you think about this, sometimes you can use a morph target now for subdivision level one now, like morph target, morph target. And when you're sculpting, just use the undo history for morph target ability. Now, if you yep. are doing something where polygon counts changing all the time, then I'm gonna use a different brush for this. I'm not gonna use this same brush now. I would now use the history brush recall. So you guys now have two types of brushes that can recall any sculpting detail, whether it be something that has all the same polygon count and it's a morph target or the history brush is a projection, but it's looking at the history. So even if I turn this into a Dynamesh, if I turn this Sculptures Pro, the history brush doesn't care and it can actually go back and get some things like, so like for example, right? We've just morphed out this, okay? And now we're going to just change the geometry. So we'll just delete the lower because I'm going to just turn it into a Dynamesh. And in fact, I'm going to click and drag over here so I can get the resolution. Shane, you're still in here. We've also got it in the Sculptures Pro now. This is a request from our yes. main man, Shane Olson, right there. So now you can click and drag and do the same thing with Sculptures Pro. And then I say Dynamesh. Oh, Dyna. Oh, Dyna. Might help if I clear my mess. Oh, die. <laughs> so now this is a Dynamesh. So the topology is completely different. Okay. And so you remember this marker was looking at nothing. Okay. In essence, but this history brush can go back and give you even that state. So think about it. you can use this for damage, like switch to a Damien standard brush, right? And you guys could use that. And then at some point it's going to start getting rid of those scales. There's so many things that you can start doing here with this. But what's really nice is going, you know what? I want to get the scales back. So now go back to when we had all the scales again, right there. Make that the new marker. Come back. And even though that this is a Dynamesh, right? Well, not Damien Standard. We can go back to this history recall and get all those scales back. There you go. There you go. 
right? So really good. We've it's opened up so many things for us sculpturally. We are using the undo history not just to be redo undos. This is the way we operate in the ZBrush world. We're thinking about how else can we take advantage of this? This is data being stored. Let's sculpturally take advantage of it as well. Not just yeah. using for undos, redos, just like in your call recalling history in essence. That's so there you go. Yes. Wait, bread and butter, what pattern brush, what pattern brush what, did you want to see? Which one were you referring to? Well, 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 all right. Oh. all right, all right, all right. They have a cool. Let's see. What yeah, so like, sure the, no prize, the prize question from Mick Mant. Yeah, on. the prizes are going to be available worldwide, wherever you're in the world, unless there is an issue where one of the sponsors can't ship to your country because there's just no way to ship to your country. That would be the only thing that could happen to you. Um, if you are winning this and there's a physical prize, like for example, first place, one of the things they're going to win is a form three 3d printer. That's worth $4,000. That's one of the things first place is going to get. If uh, form lads can't ship to your country, there's nothing they can do or nothing we can do about it. But there's going to be digital prizes as well with that. But unfortunately there's, we're, it's out of our hands if there is a situation, but we haven't had that problem yet. Are you, are you referring to, are you referring to the ones that are in here, the pattern ones? Yeah, they said Those pattern two or pattern one. Those are doing different things. This one, you're referring to these patterns. I think they're referring to these patterns. So hold on, let's morph this out. Let's, let's history this out. Boop, 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 boop. Let's first get the history brush. Let's get back to, or up, you know, let's just go back to here. Why am I even going to history it? Got to go back okay. in time. All right, so this, you're talking about these pattern brushes here, right? Where you can do patterns like this. Let's get let's get more topology up here. Go up a level because I'm down a level. And let's, right, so this pattern brush, these in here doing this type of pattern. Or pattern two, which is bricks like this. So this is taking advantage of a different feature, actually. These yep. buttons here. And yep. this is, I like that you called these out. This is very important to think about this, right? Thinking about brushes like this. This would be a pretty heavy shield. Now. This would I be very I don't know. If, I don't know. Even though he's berserker, I don't know if he can <laughs> hold this up. But it's either rocks or it's like some sort of alligator skin. That's sure, happening we could go there. that way. Yeah, you could probably hit it with some smoothness to yeah, smooth up. peaks or something like that. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, give yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're talking. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. the this particular brush is taking advantage of two things right now. Mm -hmm. This brush is taking advantage. Number one, there's already an alpha attached to it, right here, but it's also taking advantage of surface noise. So right now, this has got a noise attached to the brush. So if I go and edit. It's actually using this image of a rock alpha that's repeatable, which actually ships with ZBrush. So now it's using both elements. So I can control how deep and things I want this brick one to be, but then I'm also sculpting with the other alpha on top of it. But with that said, we've turned on and activated local projection mode, and we've activated dynamic scaling with a base scale of two what is that doing what is happening here on, boss. On. okay here we go we're gonna do it let's do let's just oh Dinah. okay name that artist people you should know that song i'm doing what forget it don't bother don't try to get in my head it's not <laughs> worth it it's just ricky forget it it's over all right i follow i know what you're going okay so this, right, we give this ability. The nice thing about this brush is you can rotate the model and get that same pattern. Rotate the model, get the same pattern. Okay, why am I doing this? Because if I now come over here and I turn off this projection and do it, notice I don't get the pattern on this side. I get just like streaks happening. Same thing here on the bottom. I'm just going to get streaks. If I come here, I get the pattern. 
The reason being is surface noise with an image. It's a 2D visual. So however the model was picked up is how this 2D image looks. So this model is looking, it's a cube, it's looking straight at. So the sides, left and right and top and bottom, surface noise can't see it right now with the image. With the image. If you're using this and the plugin, that's different. Those are 3D. That totally different. But when you're having an image in here, and that's the thing about it is you're doing a stamping projection based upon your camera plane. So this is now not possible to just go, hey, I want to go here and then move here and get the bricks again. No, you're just going to get the continuation of that brick shooting across. Okay, so this is the difference now of turning this on. We are now, I don't even have to look at the cube and see I can do different things. So see here, this is now getting that projection because now I'm coming to here and then now this, I can just continue sculpting. If I do this and then pick back up and then do this, I'm not going to get that same projection thing. Every time I move, and I re-put my cursor back down, I'm now re-evaluating the surface to give me this. So that's why I don't get those shooting lines across. What is dynamic scaling doing? This is really big for environment, skin pores, scales, the list goes on and on, Paul's bad jokes, okay? <laughs> so this is all about pressure sensitivity. So this is setting a scale. So if I'm pressing this hard, the the rocks are that big. If I'm pressing lighter, they're smaller. Let's actually divide up some so you guys can really see this. Okay, so here is one type. But if I push harder, see the, the bricks are bigger. If I go really light, the bricks are a lot smaller. So it's looking at both of these things. This dynamically saying is look at the brush size. I dynamically say this, and then you have a set scale number there. So if I go with a smaller brush size, you've changed the range. So now I'm going to get really tiny and then just only medium size. I'm not going to be able to go that big no matter what I do because it's looking at two things. It's looking at the draw size and my pressure sensitivity. So it's looking at your draw size is giving you the range that, and then how much bigger than the draw size. So this is two times bigger, right? So if I get this to go to four, then this is going to, when I'm light, it's thick. But if I go really push really hard, like we'll go over here. If I push really hard, see how big that is? If I'm pushing light, they're a certain size. So you can see I can do different things in here. So yeah, as an yeah. example, you're doing different stuff. If you come back into here and you don't do an image and you do this instead, right? We're using something like this. And we start scaling things up. Maybe not so strong. Maybe let's go negative. Let's do something like this, right? So now you have this. So it's almost like looking like skin poor elephant skin. So what I'm using is that alpha now with this graph. So that graph is giving me, you know, that almost looks like a moon. Yeah. Shape, but it's combining it now, right? So then when I go anywhere, if I'm light, it's going to be very light skin. But if I push hard, see more of that, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, unevenness to like a skin. Horribleness. Um, Right. So you see you getting little crevices in there. So it's yeah. more realistic because I'm using both of these together now based upon my pressure sensitivity and yeah. what I'm doing. What, what I like to do, too, and this is like if you're trying to get that pattern up to in the edge of something where, you know, like Paul was demonstrating as he got closer to that edge, a little bit of that fall off came. You saw those streaks. I like to go to the brush depth setting and actually embed that and just adjust that brush depth. Just modify it a little bit so I can get closer to the edge before it spills over. And you can make some adjustments that way, too. So you can combine the depth portion to this as well so that you can get as close to the edge as possible, especially if you use like a big brush like I tend to. Yeah, so you want to use this and then you want this one. As you guys can see, the blue is set. This is setting this to zero. So now I've limited the brush in here big time, right? So you can have different results here depending on what you're doing. So you have a, an app, actual masking that's clipping the brush to not pay attention to surface change as much. That's happening. Yes, 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 yes. So there you go. Uh, got a big, got a big question, um, which is which. 
it's more of, it's more up to you but they're asking uh what would you guys recommend for the sculpt off a whole body half body character bust scale scope uh or how polished the uh, piece is at the end uh, my my advice is again it all comes down to you and the pre-planning it's what you want to do um there's probably going to be a lot of people doing a full character um however again that's up to you Wh whatever it is you want to showcase really think about that final image and what that looks like and what i would recommend is go look at like some some of like you know magic the gathering or lord of the rings or world of warcraft look at those style characters because they line up a little closely to what this theme is and kind of see how their final presented is and then you know take some inspiration from that aspect it doesn't really matter if you do a full character or a bust as long as what you are doing at the end tells us a the story and b we can recognize the character from the theme it just has to match but you could do a bust you could do a full character it's completely up to you on what you would want to do i would just say again less is more in some cases um for something like this i might i might end up just doing a really detailed bust just chop off the legs and just focus on the things that would really tell the story if it tells that story. So um, I know that's kind of a kind of a rounded answer, but hopefully I would go I it. would go this route. Past winners have not done a whole body. Uh, the, the first two online ones, actually, not last year. Last year, I'm trying to remember Hammy's. Hammy's had to because we gave you guys an environment piece to put the piece in. But the previous mm -hmm. two years, the winners only did like a three quarter of the character. There was no feet. No legs, in essence. And that's the piece yep. that won the last two online ones. If you look at past winners, it's not necessarily the whole character. Is how much do you grab that theme we're giving you, which is sword and sorcery, and you got to pick one of those characters. Me, you're asking me, I wouldn't do a full-size character because I'd want to put as much detailing and putting everything to a finished clean state as much as possible. So I personally would probably do something like a waist up, maybe knee up at most personally i would really back to the original tip i gave look at the framing right out the gate like today when you're done here if you're going to compete which you should all be competing because we we want to see you sculpt and that and you can win some cool stuff and prizes i would start looking at just right out the gate framing yeah like don't even bother taking your character just take like take a mannequin like just take what's inside a zbrush here go to here go to the mannequins and then just start moving the mannequin around because then you can also think how much of a maybe of a little pose do I want to do? It's so easy with a mannequin to do that, right? So I would say grab like this mannequin right here and I cannot have the doc. Hold on, I can't have the document. That's just, just not for me, right? And then grabbing this mannequin and then just start moving it. Like, don't worry about the sculpting right now. Worry about how do I want this frame? And then you'll see just looking at that, right? We've already told you one rule is one of these sizes must be at least 1,500 pixels, so 1,500. So I might go, do I want a horizontal or a vertical? Yeah. If you think about it, you're doing a character. Less work, vertical. More yep. work, horizontal. Because horizontal. Yep. you got to fill more this way in your frame than this way, right? So as an artist, i got to make this decision. Do I want my height to be the 1500 pixels? And then I remember the rule says minimum only one, one. So I can yep. go 800 this way, resize. Okay, he's asking, do we want like the resize? Yes. This is now what I'm working with, right? This is my frame for the entire thing. So I would then do this, right? Put this in there and figure out, okay, how do I want to frame a character up in this to tell a story? You got to be telling a story, right? Because the judges are looking at your characters. They don't. They don't. They're not watching every single one of our streams over and over and over. There's no time for that. There's a lot of you competing. They're going to be watching ones that they're picking, looking at those. We are going to be looking at those, making sure no rules are broken. So, like this, like, do I really want to frame it like this? Do I want the body? I want a head tilt. Do I want a head tilt? Maybe turn. Okay. Do I prefer this kind of frame? Right. You'll find out a lot of stuff. Personally, this is my number one tip for you. You're going to discover real fast if you just do that. Look how much less I got to worry about sculpting if this is what I want my final render to be. And yep. then just store this. Just store this now and just say, go to draw, come down here, right? Store camera and just final. Yep. No. Yep. Show there. them the timeline, the movie timeline. If they don't sculpt in perspective, show them the, the movie timeline. Yeah, you can use the timeline here if you want to as well, right? 
one of them. Now I can always come back and say, give me final. Boom. So I, and this is stored. So even if I, you know, you, you guys want to change your document size back to being while you're working, you want to have as much document space as you want. You can do that. Right. And then have this and going back and then you're going to go back and then change your document size when you're done. Right. And then this, you see the final, it still remembers it, but it's remembered based upon obviously where I was with the document and how it was framed before. Right. So if I zoom this out more, see, it's just framing based upon the doc. So just go back and remember your document size that you made. I made 1500 by 800. Boom. Hit there. Right. Save yourself wow. time in that way. Yep. And as far as polishing goes, how polished your character is, you know, that again, that while that is up to you, I wouldn't worry about polishing too much as long as it's readable and it looks good and it's cohesive. You know, if you have one section that's highly detailed and the rest of it is kind of muddy, then it's not going to read well and that might throw the judges off. So when you're when you're worried about detail, keep everything at an equal pace. You know, this is where I'm really going to stress you know, follow the pipeline of blocking something out, getting your initial primary forms going and that things look good. Get everything on the canvas. If you got a bunch of armor plates and cape and you have, you know, um, belts and weaponry, hang, get all of that at a low resolution on your character and then move into your secondary forms. And for the most part, secondary forms might be all you really need to tell your story in this three hours. Tertiary forms might not be really i don't even know if he'd really get to that point but if you know little tricks of what your character is going to be and you practice you could you'd be surprised how quickly you can get something and there's been a couple winners in the past where if you zoom all the way in it does not look really pretty <clears throat> here's a prime look... example i think what ian's saying okay if you yeah. guys look at this right it it's hard surfaces you can't say that it's not it definitely looks a little hard surface but if you zoom in it's not clean no. Who cares if it's going to be in the frame like this? That yep. looks hard surface from this distance. That's enough. Move on. Right? Don't get hung up and, oh, I got to make this perfectly edged here and perfect edge there. And don't forget, you're going to render. You're going to maybe colorize it if you want to colorize it. Live yep. in that world. This is where I said also letting go of things and trying not to get hung up in all the perfect perfections and perfect. Right? Yep. Look at it in that sense as well. Okay. Really pay attention to those things. I would recommend to you as well. And as far as um, the brush question, any brushes from 2022 previous versions will load in 2023. It's the opposite where you could run into a problem. A brush that's made in 2023 cannot be loaded in older versions of ZBrush. Yep. And in that case, for example, there'd be, for example, when we guys, when we added this, that was only in a certain version. So older versions don't know about these buttons existing. So if you try to make a brush when we release this, which I, I'm trying to remember, I think it was 2020. 20, yeah, ew. I maybe, don't know. I don't know. Maybe 2020. <laughs> so for example, let's say it was 2021. 2020, 20, 2019, 2018, all the, don't have these buttons. So there's no way it can give you that brush because the buttons don't exist in the old versions. That's why you yeah. can't take a brush from 2023 and put it in 2022. There's things in here that's been added to the brush system that this version knows about older versions don't know about so it can't be loaded you can go the other way you can go old into the new yep exactly so as we're wrapping as we're getting to the point where we're going to start wrapping up i also want to uh, just mention too we're going to do a couple more of these leading up to the live streams or, or to the sculpt off so please make sure to register please make sure to go get all of that stuff read the rules um, again, we covered a lot of the rules, especially the brushes. So if at any point in time you're a little uh, you're a little not sure, um, we're going to be chaptering this uh, VOD. So this will stay up so you can always come back and find the chapter and then just come in and start, you know, just refresh yourself. But go through the rules. Go through today. Start prepping what your character is going to be. Pick your favorite one and then create a plan. Have reference off on the side. Practice sculpting it a few times. Just really familiarize yourself so that you're more than prepared. Because again, this is gonna, this is this is really cool. I'm really loving this year just because there's a prompt that tells you enough information to really get the ball rolling. So, and if you're gonna practice live streaming or you're gonna do some other stuff on the side and you want to share what you're, you know, you want to share like, you know, you're, well, I'd say don't share, don't share what you're gonna do. Keep it a surprise. Keep it a surprise. 
Um, but yeah, but again, we're, we're going to do a couple more of these streams to make sure that, you know, if you guys have any other questions and stuff. So we're going to do another one next Friday at the same time. So if you think of questions of like how to do something specific, um, what brushes you think would be best for certain tasks, like Paul was showcasing IMMs and also the surface noise and the different versions, that stuff right there is going to be really crucial. So if you have those questions or you're not sure, um, go ahead and, and familiarize yourself with that. There's one more tip, one more tip before we go that I actually want to give, and I think this is going to be the biggest tip of all. So I'm just going to quickly splash over to my ZBrush here. And I just want to point this out because I'm surprised still how many people don't know of this one feature that I think saves so much time. And that is press and hold control over any feature. Anytime you have a thing about a feature, you're trying to do something in ZBrush, you're trying to figure it out. You don't know what, you know, you're like, oh, what's, what's micro poly do or what's dynamic do? Press and hold control on each and every one of these features and the auto notes pop up and this will tell you what is going on inside of zbrush and it gives you a nice explanation it won't do it on a menu because there's nothing to share there but it will tell you on the feature and i'm just holding control and moving my mouse over to the feature that i want to actually be told what it is, it is and what it does so definitely familiarize yourself too that's another way to learn zbrush this is a ways that i've taught myself zbrush i know paul you've said the same thing you've come in and you've been like what does this do because there's so many features inside of zbrush what does the ray mesh do so that is one that I wanted to showcase as well. But if at any point in time, next Friday, we're going to do another another one of these streams. I also stream on Wednesday. So if you can come in and you can ask, hey, hey, what is going on? And we'll answer those questions. So yep, yep, yep. But great stuff, guys. Paul, thank you for joining on the stream. We miss you. It's always nice to have you come on here and rant away because, I mean, come on. You are ZBrush. It's awesome. Tangents. <laughs> tangents love it love it love again, it again the last thing just remember go to uh, the zbrushsummit.com right and if you've never streamed please that's the first thing you should do is go make an account on youtube or twitch and yeah. just do a stream just put it out there and so you can practice that understand if you're going to use obs if you're going to if you're going to use restream whatever you're going to use to send out your stream right or even just using youtube just please make sure you do that because every year there's always somebody that comes to us like literally the day of the challenge, the day before the challenge. Like, I don't know how to stream. I don't know how to do this. It's too late. You're too late to uh, be able to really put it all together for yourselves. So please yeah. do, make sure you do that. If you've never streamed before, take the time today and go through this. And this is the page where we walk you through one through six, how to set up an account, what to look for. So please make sure you do that as well. Because I'd love to see as many people as possible competing, having some fun. It's fun every year. Uh, like it's for us too. Just being there, watching what you all do, is just really a lot of fun. Yeah, and I want to end with um, something also special about this year's sculpt off. Obviously, it's still online. The rest of the summit is in person, so you guys be in there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're all going to be in there in person. Okay. There's also going to be some special guests coming to this year's. Yes, sculpt I'm so off. excited. So we got I'm some so special excited. guests that we're not announcing. We wanted to. The day of the competition on Thursday, they're going to appear on the stage with us. Yes. I'm so excited. You, you guys have no idea. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome. You guys are going to have a lot of fun. So, you know, again, if you have any questions, let us know. But again, thank you, everyone. And with that, we're going to say goodbye. We'll see you next week. So until then, thank you for your questions, and we'll talk to you later. See you next Bye. Friday. Bye.